Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. A High Court judge has ruled that bosses at a housing trust in Manchester were wrong to demote a manager who said gay weddings in churches would be an equality too far. Adrian Smith, a Christian, made the remark in his own time on his personal Facebook page, not visible to the general public. But bosses at Trafford Housing Trust took action against Mr Smith, saying the comments amounted to gross misconduct and could bring the trust into disrepute. Passing judgment, Mr Justice Briggs said, Mr Smith was taken to task for doing nothing wrong, suspended and subjected to a disciplinary procedure which wrongly found him guilty of gross misconduct. The breach of contract which the trust thereby committed was serious and repudiatory. Mr Smith welcomed the outcome as a victory for free speech and speaking through the Christian Institute's Mike Judge, voiced his concerns over future cases if marriage is redefined. Something has poisoned the atmosphere in Britain where an honest man like me can be punished for making perfectly polite remarks about the importance of marriage. I have won today, but what will tomorrow bring? Bishop Michael Nazarali has warned of a slippery slope developing if doctors were legally allowed to help patients kill themselves. The bishop was writing in reaction to an article promoting assisted suicide, published in The Economist magazine. He said, If autonomy is what it's all about, then why not permit those who are depressed, the disabled and the disappointed to end their lives? The bishop also warned against what he called the secular dogma of radical autonomy, which sees people as individual units rather than relational beings whose dying affects those near and dear to them. He added that doctors' organisations are wary of any suggestion that they should participate in the killing of patients. The chairman of polling company Comrades, Andrew Hawkins, has written to David Cameron to put the record straight about the number of people who are in favour of the government plans to redefine marriage. The Prime Minister had recently said in a letter to a fellow MP that more Tory-leaning voters were in favour of same-sex marriage than were put off by it. But Mr Hawkins says that David Cameron has misrepresented polling data and that redefining marriage was unlikely to win back support from disillusioned voters. In his letter, Mr Hawkins says the level of agreement that marriage should stay as it is varies between 55 and over 70%. He also cites another recent Comrades poll which showed that 6 out of 10 Tory party chairmen believed the policy would lose the party more votes than it would gain. Meanwhile, Chancellor George Osborne has also come in for a barrage of criticism this week after he suggested that redefining marriage would help the Conservatives win the next election. Techniques that would create genetically modified babies should be urgently opposed, a bioethics group says. The Anscombe Bioethics Centre gave the warning as a government-backed consultation on two techniques being considered approaches its conclusion. A spokesman said, One technique would split genetic motherhood and give the child three genetic parents. The other technique would produce a child with no genetic parents. A child cloned instead from spare parts harvested from earlier living embryos. Both techniques would affect not only individuals conceived and born, but also their descendants. The consultation, which is being run by the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority, closes on December the 7th. Coffee giant Starbucks is failing to filter out pornography from its free in-store Wi-Fi. It has led to concerns that children could access inappropriate material when dining in their restaurants. The coffee chain was warned over a year ago about the problem, but still has not rectified the situation. Baroness Massey, a former chairman of the Family Planning Association, highlighted the issue in the House of Lords and called on the government to remind high street companies of their duties to protect our children. A spokesman for Starbucks said it was working on a solution with Wi-Fi provider BT. And finally, a man who has been in a persistent vegetative state for more than 10 years has communicated to doctors that he is in no pain by the power of thought. Scientists in Canada used a pioneering technique on Scott Routley, who was left severely brain damaged after a car crash. They put Mr Routley in a special brain scanner and asked him to imagine various scenarios. As a result, blood flowed to a different part of his brain according to what he was thinking. Doctors then asked Mr Routley to change what he was imagining according to whether the answers to their questions were yes or no. I want you to tell us whether you are in any pain. The scan suggested that the answer was no. I think it was enormously significant. This is the first time that 
we have asked a patient a question in the scanner that is actually relevant to their clinical condition. Mr Routley's case calls into question court rulings in the past which have allowed patients in similar circumstances to die of thirst and hunger. But Scott's parents say they are delighted with the results. Well that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.